Hello guys, Matt from Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping here. Just want to um, do a few videos here on a lot of questions I get asked all the time on the setups that we do. So I'm going to get straight into it. Charging from the vehicle to the caravan and keeping the three-way fridge cold at the same time. Pretty standard setup on most caravans out there. You've got a three-way fridge in your van, your vehicle there. While you're driving, you want to keep that fridge cold. So all caravans that have a three-way fridge will have this circuit installed. So the caravan manufacturer will generally give you the wiring that's required on the 12-pin plug um, and or Anderson set, um, system. So there's right and wrong ways to do it. A lot of people will send the vehicle off to get wired up. Um, most people do it right, but there's a lot of people that don't, and that's where we run into the issues. So I'm going to touch base on the right way to do it. Um, this way is foolproof. It always works all the time. And that's simply to, um, you're just gonna run thick cable. It's really easy. Um, everyone's running six mil, you know, five mil, it's auto, it's just too thin. It's always melting, we're getting problems. The fridge has got a massive bulk drop, you know, eight meters away, always getting issues. So the way I do it, I like the Anderson system because it's a 50 amp plug. You can get really thick cable into the back of it as opposed to a 12 pin. Um, 12 pin's okay, but the Anderson plug system's better. So I'm going to run through both setups using the red and grey Anderson plug and the 12 pin setup as well. So essentially both circuits are the same, it's just the connection interface between the caravan and the vehicle that changes whichever plug setup you go for. So, we'll get straight into it. Pretty simple, I've done a diagram. So, pretty easy. This is your vehicle, and there's your caravan. This is just a standard isolator setup, no DC charger incorporated, um, no extra batteries, just your standard run of the mill. I've got a car, I've got a van, I want to keep everything charged up and go. This is the way to do it. So if you don't have the red and grey Anderson plug, you can substitute that out for a 12 pin. Um, the problem I do find with 12 pins, as opposed to an Anderson plug, and you'll read about this on every forum on the planet, is pins 10 and 9, respectively, even 8, battery charge, you'll always get a melting because it's really hard to see, but the gauge of the cable that you can fit in this maximum is only 8 mil, um, right being there. So it does bottleneck the power, and the maximum you can flow over this terminal is rated to about 35 amps. Now that's still well above what any three-way fridge is going to draw, but the problem is, is the pins close. You know, because people grab the plugs and they wiggle them, so they close. Do it all the time, they eventually close right off, so when you put the plug in, it's really loose, creates heat, hence it melts. That doesn't happen with an Anderson plug. Um, it'll click in if it's a good connection, a good clean connection, it'll click in and it'll stay in. And that's what you want, essentially. Um, so that's why I prefer the red and gray Anderson system. Um, but this still does apply to the 12 pin, like I said. So we'll start on this one. Vehicle battery, main battery. So we'll talk about the grey Anderson system. This is the charging circuit. So we won't dive into any smart alternators and all that stuff here. We'll just deal with the isolations. So separate lines. It's easy, you know. Grey Anderson line on its own fused isolator. VSR. Standard VSR. Keep it simple. Nice and thick cable, 8 BNS minimum. All the way to a grey Anderson plug, simple. You can't bear to earth it at the rear, at the chassis. Don't run it back to the battery, right? Because a lot of people will put it in the wrong spot if they do have a smart alternator, and that's when they get charging issues. So, the main vehicle battery is earth. You just earth it back. as long as it's nice and thick. Then the cable runs are short as well. You've only got a five meter run with one run. So keep that short. You won't have a problem with charging if you do it that way. Um, you can go VSR or an ignition controlled. Um, high amperage relay, that's fine, both will work. Um, but generally, you stick with the VSR and you'll be fine. Um, like I said, we'll get into the DC charging after. Completely separate line now, this is for the fridge and specifically for the three-way fridge only. Separate line, same setup. Difference is, is the isolator. Um, you can go to the VSR, as long as the amperage draw isn't too great at the rear. Um, so you just kind of watch it, make sure you get a VSR with a wide um, you know, turn on, turn off range. So, same thing, separate line. Fuse, heavy cable, 8 BNS, 10 square, 
all the way through to a red Anderson. So you've got your red for your fridge, and you've got your grey for your battery charge. Now, they can't plug into each other. Red and grey isn't just a colour thing. They're keyed differently. A lot of people don't know this. So they're keyed differently. Specifically, they can't, they can't plug into each other. So that means you can't bugger up plugging in your fridge line to your charge line, vice versa. So it's, it's easier to see. You know, that at the back of the vehicle, a couple of caps enclosed with your seven pin or your 12 pin if you stay with that. So that's the vehicle side of things. Now, this iso the reason for this isolated line is obviously when you pull up at a ferry or a, you know, fill up fuel, whatever, you want it to turn off. You want the fridge to shut down, otherwise it's gonna draw this battery flat, this battery. This fridge should not run from this battery, but we'll get into that because there's some van manufacturers that still do it. They don't have problems, but we'll, we'll dive into that after. So, separate, separate, perfect. Now, the caravan side. Grey Anderson plug, fused, charge the battery. Very simple. Most fans are set up like this now. Um, like I said, we'll dive into DC charging shortly. Uh, that basically just runs in between it. So, on the Anderson plug, on the red side of things, this is where it gets interesting. If this runs for a 12 pin, it's usually direct and that's fine. That's when we get the melting issues. But what they do at the back of the fridge is, some van manufacturers, there's a little D plus wire, and this is for the automatic fridge. D plus wire, they loop over to the vehicle. Now what that is, that's a trigger wire for the AES fridge. That tells the fridge, hey, pull power from my vehicle circuit, which is this circuit, not this battery that tells the fridge to start pulling high current from this setup. So that D plus Y, it's fine to loop over to that line as long as this line is isolated. Because as this isolator turns off, your fridge will turn off. That will flick over and try to go to gas. Um, not immediately, it's about a 15 minute delay, so read your theft for the book in your Domenic book. So the Anderson system is separate. Completely separate, it's got nothing to do with the caravan battery. This is separate, this is separate. They're on their own circuits. They both take care of each other, you don't have to worry about anything. So, charging the battery, completely separate. There's no crossover between it. Now, if I were to pull this fridge's power source from this battery, run it straight into that, and have no Anderson plug there, you've essentially got one feed trying to charge a battery and keep a three-way fridge cold, it never works. The second that fridge turns on and sucks, you know, 17 odd, 20 odd amps, that drags that voltage down. If that voltage is down, it won't charge. Most AGMs require a cycle between you know 14.4 and 14.8. If that battery does not see that voltage, it just won't charge. Um, big, big common problem to come across is people saying my van battery's not charging, but the fridge is cold, or vice versa, the fridge isn't cold and the battery's charging. It's because they tap into this battery for the the you know the high current circuit. And if you read the book, funny enough, it's um, yeah, it's supposed to come from the vehicle. So that this setup here is foolproof. It never fails. It always works, and it will keep your fridge cold, and this battery will always be charged. So everything's isolated. There's no way of running flat. You can stop, pull over for coffee, fill up fuel, shut your engine down, walk away, knowing that 15 minutes later, if you've got the automatic fridge, it's going to flick over. So you just crack the gas bottle, or it's not going to come on gas. It, it's just not going to drain this battery and you're going to have a full battery to start your car and drive away. So this is the, um, the pretty straightforward setup that you'll find on most fans. So yeah, have a good look at it, check it out, drop me some comments.